Howdy folks, today we've got another kit for you. This one is 132 scale from Edward BF108. Appropriate pack edition, so appropriate pack, pack edition gives you a little bit of resin, possibly sometimes, masks, photo etch, that kind of thing. But one thing to note, this kit is not an Edard kit. The original kit was from Centipede Flyers in 2008. Um, new tool by them. They re-released it in 2008, the second time in the same year. So they've done the kit twice with this box art. And then in 2020, Ed have taken on the moulds and got the kit now. So this box art is originally from Centipede, but Ed have taken it on and some of that uh, taken the kit on. So um, the moulding is not as crisp and clean as Edod as you expect but nonetheless I have already taken a look at this kit and it is quite clean still so it's basically mimic as if a limited run kit like say from um, it's a bit similar to like a special hobby brand of kit of how it goes together and how clean it is like it's that kind of cleanness um so if you're interested uh these are the schemes the most famous one is obviously the desert one uh, kit number is 3006 same schemes on the side and i say it's 132 scale it's a typical uh, edard packaging normal size box for them um, this is about 30 something quid, super cheap bargain in my opinion for Edward, for what you get for value for money and a, 30, a uh, 132 scale kit for that size is superb. You get your kit in just thrown into these weird bags so you can tell straight away it's not an Edward kit, you can see it's someone else's. There's your canopy. We've got wings, interior detail, wheels, fuselage halves, etc. Flaps and ailerons. I got and bought aftermarket for this because I wanted a little bit more resin. I bought an aftermarket propeller, wooden one, not realising you get a wooden one in the kit already. So I've got a spare um, wooden propeller. I've got these two wheels are the same I've accidentally ordered two so these are ones with bobbles and these ones are with a center cap so I'll end up with spare wheels and a spare propeller but we, we, we'll go through this now you've got your decals fellow action work and the worksheet is normal okay this is your worksheet uh, history on the aircraft and uh, manufacturer and stuff and general information if you wish to read it pause the video and then again in I think in Ukraine from where the kit comes from that's where Adard is based <coughs> your first step your typical sprue map where you get in the kit like I say I bought a uh, propeller not realizing this comes in the kit already so I end up with a spare masks photo etch sprues Mr. Hobby colours, so if you don't use them, you're going to have to do your references. Starting off with fuel tanks, cockpit floor, bench seat at the back for passengers, a little bit of detail. If you're having fuel tanks and a bench seat, which is this section, so you've got two ways of doing it, but this is for version A only, which is the desert scheme. It might not even be fuel, you can probably put water in there as well, being it's in the desert, desert. just in case so you crash land or anything like that and you're out in the desert, you're going to want to walk water for survival, so possibly one of them is possibly water as well. Uh, and then you're working on PE seatbelts, which are pre-coloured, um, and then on new pedals. The seats are for the bench seat and the, uh, and the front seats. Next section is working on instrument panel on the side of the aircraft on two sides would be, so it'd be some levers probably for landing gear and stuff or on trim and whatever. Some handles, 
looks like two types of fight stick another section of instruments on the side actually come to think of it this section is, is one cockpit which is with the bench seat and this is the uh, tropical version so there's slight variances so instrument panel handles two flights of flight stick going on with your seat seat belts and this C section go on to here pedals and so forth and then underneath it's <coughs> tropical version slight differences this looks the same so does this so does this but the only difference I can see is like at the back everything else seems to be roughly the same support struts the uh, seat belts interior detail you've got trim levers two sides of the fuselage going together the back rest of the chair bench seat the back rest again seat belts going in which is this section here this piece looks like the bottom of the engine or part of the engine and then you're working on the engine itself which is a nice touch you've got a detailed engine engine block crankcase pistons Pipe in, exhaust manifold and stuff, firewall. And then you're working on your ailerons and flaps. I don't think they're poseable, unfortunately. Maybe a little bit of work, probably you can probably do them. But then your engine going in and sandwiching your fuel halves together. And then you've got your photo etch cockpit going in. But me, I bought the uh, Zoom cockpit, which is highly detailed and it's resin and it's 3d and everything else and it's pre-painted may think it's lazy cheap way of doing it um someone else doing the cockpit for you if you want to go down that route it's tidy up to you um i've never used a zoom kit from edward so i'm gonna try it anyway we will look at that at the end anyway uh here looks like dropping in your cockpit tub from underneath you've got more flaps and other ones two wings being sandwiched together and your feet and your whole tire fuel rod being put together as well so all going together at once your flaps going in again i don't think they're poseable but they might be a nice touch if they was normal wheels in the kit are plastic but i've bought aftermarket resin from edward again so this is basic you got the uh, ones with the bubble tires, or you got smooth tires, and then you got ones with inserts, and so forth. I think the ones with inserts might be for the desert to stop dust going in the uh, inside the wheels and messing up the brakes and stuff. Um, you've got little pieces going on the wings, or probably like pitot tubes and stuff. Two ends of the glass going in. I'll probably leave that right at the end. Because that's your turn signals, your green and your red like lights. These look like more pitot tubes and stuff, and speed indicators and stuff and whatever. This again, I don't know. Probably to do with the tropical version or something. It's or airflow, it's some kind of pitot tube of some sort. Little light going on the side. Pieces going on the bottom of the aircraft. A little bit of detail inside the cockpit, which is some mirrors. Dropping your cockpit down, your cockpit is moulded in one piece, so you can't have the door open or anything. Again, working at the front of the aircraft, you've got the uh, metal propeller, which comes in plastic. And then you've got the uh, wooden propeller, which is moulded in resin. Again, I didn't know this come in the kit, so I end up buying one, and now I've got a spare. Um... So we tell a lie, you do get extra glass to have the canopy open, again which is a nice touch. Strangely it's a weird way of the canopy open, it opens up at the front and folds forward, it's a weird way of doing it, a bit like uh, Lamborghini doors, the way they flip up and open and, and over and round, it's a bit weird. Your front propeller and chin going all on, unfortunately you've done all that detail for the engine and put that chin on, you're not going to hardly see any of it apart from a tiny piece of the bottom. It's a shame you couldn't have the uh, the doors open 
because that would be a nice touch. Probably you can modify and cut in. There may be aftermarket coming out soon to do all that, but as it stands, you, you can't do any of that, which is a bit of a shame. Canopy masks for your canopy. And then you've got masks for your wheels. You've got this scheme here, which is the most famous one. I think it's from one of the uh, German commanders in the desert. Is it Rommel? The German commander in the desert. Um, I think it might be something to do with his aeroplane. Um, 1942, but... Um, not actually good. I'm not going to read through it though. We've got this one here, 1942-1944 at Hamburg. I think Hamburg is Germany, if I'm not mistaken. I do apologise if I get it wrong. This is a grey scheme, split in the camouflage. This has the wooden propeller and the desert one has the uh, metal one. Strange how in 1942 you used the metal one, but then in later wars they've gone to a wooden one. You would have thought it'd be the other way around, but nonetheless, unless metal was getting scarce and then it's cheaper to use wood and so forth because they were struggling for materials, the Germans, because we're starting to beat them. You've got a nice winter one which is a nice touch you don't see winter airplanes that often and people don't seem to do them i don't know why maybe because it's a little bit more work or they just just don't like it overall if you are doing this one this is a not a white airplane as such it's a white wash over the top so this would be blue yellow tips like this one but the underside would be the splinter camouflage which would be the greens and then on top is a white wash they might not explain it too well. Uh, 11, which is the white, and then they're calling out for 64. Yeah, so 64 is RML 71 and RML 70. So, yeah, so you do this camouflage on the bottom as normal, and then you do a whitewash on top. Well, technically, you don't even have to do the whitewash. You can still do those numbers and everything else without the whitewash, but it would look like this. This is the uh, splinter camouflage one with the white fins. I do like German aircraft with, the, with all the yellow all over it. It's the typical... I think the yellow is to do with like, leader or squad, squadrons and stuff. It's the, um, so they can identify themselves properly. 1940, really early transport. The German RML2, which is the uh, greeny grey colour they use. Very boring, in my opinion. I wouldn't do that one. It'd probably be this one, this one, or this one, or this one. So there's four I'll possibly do. But I do have this kit in Edward in 148 scale. But this one here in Desert is in 148. So I'm not sure if I'm going to do this. If I do it in 132, I won't do it in 148. So I'm not going to do the same skin twice. So here's your resin propeller, which is the wooden one. Again, I bought one thinking I was going to upgrade it, and it turns out you get one anyway. So I have a spare one of these. Canopy masks for your windows. These are laser cut, as usual, from Edward. Now, these are the decals from Edward. They're printed by themselves by Edward. People saying they've had issues with their decals, saying the colour's not right, and... Um, not out register, but they're just like badly printed or whatever. But I've never used their decals. Most of the time they're using cartograph, or they did use cartograph. Um, I've had no issues, but I've never used Edward decals, so I can't say. But this is the sheet. All the uh, carrier film is quite large in some places, but a little bit of microsoft set should sink these down nicely anyway. Um... So yeah, all the black serial numbers and the German crosses. You notice this kit comes with swastikas. Other countries might not get that. That's why they break it up. 
because it's still a Ill legal marking they don't really want it around so you might find yours in other countries you might find this piece being cut off already you do get instrument panel for decals if you do wish to go down that route and you don't like the resin or you don't like photo etch you can't do it for whatever reason let's put this to one side to do this towards the end So first brew, no typical order, is the wings. So here's your wings. Again, like I mentioned, it's not an Edouard kit per se. It's done by centipede flies. So the ribbon is going to be minimal in places. If you want to highly detail it, you more than wish to go over with a rivet tool. It's your kit, you do what you like. But I say... I haven't got the skills to do that yet, I'm still learning, so I'll probably just do this straight out as it is. I won't do the rivets because I don't want to screw it up, because I'm still learning. Um, injection pins on a couple on the inside, but again, it's you can see it's not a typical Edward kit. It's a little bit, I wouldn't say rough, but it's just, you can tell, it's not it's not one of the usual, because the wheel well's a bit, a bit bare as well. It's there's no rivets it's it's good um and edward of making parts for it to improve it but you can just tell it's not the typical edward so just be warned and mindful so here's the interior details you can see by looking at the engine block and stuff and parts of the engine um i think that's the oil pan some parts of the engine and these i think these are parts of the engine like pistons, the uh, front of the engine, engine top, that could be the oil pan or the top of the engine actually. You've got side supports for the engine, there's what part of the bench seat it is raised and um, wobbly. I think it would be leather, there's the back part of the firewall I think. Here's the rest of the internal details. Uh, struts for the back of the aircraft, which is full wing support. The two front seats for the aircraft. Exhaust tubes, again, not hollowed out, not slide molded or anything. So again, you may gonna have to you're gonna have to drill these ends out to make it more realistic. Requires a little bit more work. Part of the uh, front cowling, side of the engine block, it's okay. A little bit of work be done nicely. As I say, you're not going to see it anyway. Uh, there's the part of the bench seats, a large one or half one for the tropical. And then you've got your wheels. These two go with the covers, and then these two go with the ones with the inserts. Again, they're they're not deep enough to pair to the resin. They're, they're just they're okay back then, but you can tell it's just not. Not perfect, but it, it's good, but it's not perfect. It's one of those kits you... It's cheap enough to buy and it's cheap enough to put the aftermarket into it, so it's not going to hurt it. It's not going to break your bank balance. Uh, you've got your wings, and then you've got your flaps to go on them. Again, now this is your fuselage half. This is roughly how big the airplane is. It's going to be about nine inches. Again, you've got the uh, panel lines, but there's just no rivet work whatsoever. So it all depends how you want to uh, uh, tackle this. You've got a little bit of rivet work there, but 
it's all right, it's all right. I'm not complaining, it's good. There's the fuel tanks or oil drums or whatever or water. Inside the wheel well, a little bit of detail. Front of the airplane, front cowling, so the, all you're going to see for the engine is just through this piece here and that's it. So I wouldn't worry about the engine too much unless you can get these, these, these doors open. So there's that sprue. It'd be nice when it's all done. I am looking forward to doing this one. Because the last time I did a 132 scale kit was about three years ago and it was a Spitfire and that was by Ravel and that came out superb. That that kit was superb. Highly recommend that kit. Ravel Spitfire. Yeah. I did aftermarket on that as well by throwing it in from Edward and it came out superb. So here's your interior floor. Again, there's not much detail, no rivets, whatever. Very basic. There's those trim handles, but again, I don't think you need any of this because it's being replaced by the photo itch. Part of the firewall, this is the uh, metal propeller. As I say, there is no wooden one because it comes as resin. Uh, you've got detail parts for structural parts, I think they are. Not sure what that is. Your pedals, now you've got your spinner, two types. Got these ones with the fins on it. Not quite sure what the fins are for. Or the airflow, I don't know. Inside your cockpit, it is curved. It's meant to be like that. Because if you look at the side pieces, it's slightly it's slightly curved. So it's not bent out of shape or anything. Not a lot of detail inside. I think because these panels are actually a lever. So it's a bit similar to a car interior. Quite posh because it's a... Uh, Civilian aircraft it started off as. I know that much. Not too much on the information aircraft, but if you're interested in the aircraft, if you go to go to a, a guy on YouTube called Fantasy of Flight, he's in the process of restoring one of these aircrafts, 108, from the ground up. Um, and so far it's coming out superb and it's gonna be awesome when it's done. Uh, here is flaps and ones and yeah, rudders and stuff. This is nicely done. Here is the photo etch I almost forgot to show you that comes with the kit, which is almost 3D but not quite. You get your seat belts and the rest of the interior. Because I've got bought the zoom kit, I've got spare seat belts as well now as plus extras. I say there's the uh, wooden propeller, which I didn't realise come with the kit, so this is spare as well. And I did the order. I accidentally ordered two of these. It wasn't until I looked and it arrived and I thought, what an idiot. So I've got spare ones of these as well. So if anyone's interested, I might sell sell these other sets because I ain't going to need them. And I've got the other wheels because I weren't too sure which one I was going to do. So again, if I do this one, this is spare. If I do this one, these are spares or whatever. Um, here's the zoom. Instrument panel is resin, it's all 3D, pre painted, highly detailed, and then you do get the fellow etch to go with it, which is seat belts and stuff. Um, if anyone's interested on these, I'll do separate reviews on those. Here's the glass. Nice and clear. There's the two side doors, front of the uh, canopy, and then you've got the main canopy here. 
which is not very nicely molded you have got rivets around there which is a nice touch so if you're looking on the inside of the uh, glass it's pretty clean it's pretty clear it's good in my opinion you're going to see right through that So there you go guys, there's another kit from Edward, 132 scale, BF108. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.